<laughs> All right, let me know how the sound is. Let me know how the sound is, and then uh, I probably won't be able to fix it. But I've got a microphone right here, so hopefully that works out. I've got the camera about this distance away here. See, I've got a camera here, and I've got a camera there. And so hopefully that'll work out. Sound sounds good? Thank you, Seb Jamort. All right, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat, but when I get in the zone, I'm in the zone. So here's the thing. This webcam is really good, um, but it, it's got like limited distances where the focus is working out. It's like here, and then I can set it to like here, but then I can't get it close up. And then there's wide focus where everything is in focus. So for now, I'm gonna leave it like here so that ideally while I'm working, you can like see things close up. So we'll see. So I am working on today, I'm gonna work on, I should say, the uh, Arcanaut frigate. So this is my um, this is my unit for the Malayan Portents uh, campaign painting contest that's due on the 31st. This is gonna be the uh, plan here. So let's see, this guy's pretty awesome. The Caradron Overlords are really cool. They're like flying sky pirate dwarves, which is awesome. But uh, this guy fits in the war machine category. You can see the keyword at the bottom there. And that's one of the categories, I believe, for the painting contest this month. Um, at least that's how we're doing it in my store, so... Um, or the store I go to. It's not my store, but it's a store I go to. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's how we're gonna work. So basically there's a lot of detail in here. And so this is actually the first model that I'm going to do some painting before I fully assemble it. There's obviously a lot, a lot of angles where it'd be tough to fit the brush in if I... Uh, you know, put it all together at once. So I'm actually going to do that kind of separate. Um, I've got my wireless mouse here in case I need to fix anything. And my, my bad posture, too. You'll be able to see me, like, become more like Gollum every few seconds. All right. And, of course, got to stay hydrated. How are things going, guys? Yeah. All right. Cool. So let's uh, get started. All right. So I think I'm going to have to stop and do some painting pretty much right away. Because we've got like uh, one piece here that's going to come out. I've got like one piece to paint. But then I'm probably going to, or one piece to glue. And then I've got this thing that I'm pretty much going to need to paint almost immediately. This part right here. Because this is all the dials and levers on the console there. And that will need uh, some paint before I put it on. So, um, oh, so what I've, what I've done so far is I've used Ledge Belcher spray to spray the entire sprue. Which is also something I've never done before. Um, which is kind of allowed me to hopefully get like a nice even coat on everything and then the uh, the holes the little holes in the paint where the sprue connects hopefully most of those will be hidden on this model I think it probably will be and uh, if they are not then I can just touch it up with some uh, lead belcher which is in my paints somewhere you can kind of see my hand at the bottom of the screen here we go yeah some lead belcher there you go Yep. Although, whoa, it looks like it's not closed completely, so that might be ruined. We'll find out later. All right, let's see. So this is number one. Yes, starting at number one, this piece right here. It's got to come out. All right, what's up, guys? Wow, so many people already. I figured I'd get five to ten for this. So, all right, I'm going to cut this out, and I'm going to try to be... I'm going to try to keep it in the camera. This is, this is going to be a work in progress, guys, because... It's gonna take it's gonna take time before I sort of get the right angle right on everything, and I get the right uh, you know setup to be able to work well and show you guys everything at the same time. So let me know how things go with that. Let's see, and I'm gonna try not to scratch as much of the paint as possible. But hey, if I scratch a bit, we just call it you know Bob Ross called it happy accidents. I'm gonna call it battle damage. Cause it's Warhammer. That's how it goes. So I got into this hobby um, last summer. I've always kind of wanted to, but it's been a situation where either I, I didn't have the finances um, or I didn't have a store nearby. And so now this is kind of one that situation where finally I've got both. I've got a store really close to me, which is great. So this piece is the one we're gonna glue into the big one as well, number 12. And so, yeah, I'm finally able to get into the hobby, and I've already gotten way too much stuff um, for what I have time to actually do. Uh, I'm getting, I'm building a 40k army as well. I'm gonna get to these guys at some point. 
It's so awesome, Adeptus Custodes. But uh, right now, this is for my overall uh, Age of Sigmar order army. Um, hey, Darren, what's up, man? Go pack, go. I'm sorry if I don't reply to a chat right away. I'm kind of, I'm gonna try to balance it between actually doing a good job of making this and making people happy. So we'll see how that works out. So I've been told as far as painting this after you've, or as far as uh, gluing this kind of stuff after you've painted it on the sprue, there's a bit, it's a bit of a process. You put the glue on, that kind of melts away a bit of the paint, a bit of the undercoat that's been sprayed on, and then you kind of wipe that away. I might have to go grab a cube dip for that, actually. And then it just sticks together, so we'll see how that works out. But again, like the idea of painting it before, or base painting it, spraying it, you know, before I cut it out of the sprue is totally new for me. So I've done it with this one. I may regret it, I'm not sure, but one way or another, these things are going to get built, and we're going to paint it, and it's going to be awesome. So, let's see. So for now, we're going to kind of come in, and these little things, oh, it's already like way off the screen. There you go. I don't get a new snippers for every model, no, that's a, uh, I think that's a bit excessive. I think what I'm going to do here is just file some of this down. I may have to actually use this a little bit here, too. I'm gonna try not to like lick this webcam in front of me as much. Uh, it's like really close. See, it's very awkward. All right, but hey, nothing I do is ever awkward, so we're good there. So I'm just trying to kind of shave down the nubs here a little bit. I hope you can kind of see that. Can you see that? That's actually, that actually looks okay. All right, and I'm gonna take this file here. It's a very mild file. And I don't mind if I get some of the paint because um, I can always go in and touch it up later. That's fine. Um, yeah. So we are going to file a little bit of this down. Because we want everything to fit together nice and flush. And some of this, you know, because we've got some paint on there. But that looks okay. I think that looks okay there. Yeah. Good enough. Who knows? Let's see, how long does it take to usually paint slash assemble a whole model? It depends entirely on the model, like, for instance, this guy right here, little Arcanaut Company captain, put him together in like 15 minutes, but then uh, in painting maybe it takes an hour, two hours if I want to put a lot of detail into it, so it's not, it's not that bad. Not, I mean, an hour is probably even generous for this. Um, I've got these guys uh, already undercoated with lead belchers, same as this, so I'm going to paint them at some point. I've got, I've got so many models I actually want to work on. We've got, whoa, I'm going to throw him on the ground. The Destruction Harbinger, so cool. Got to paint him. And then I should show this guy off here before I go any further. This is the, the Order Harbinger that this is uh, actually done. Yeah. So this is the Lord Ordinator. The Order Harbinger from the um, Line Portance thing that's going on right now. This is probably the model I've put the most work into out of anything I've done in Warhammer. Um, you can kind of see... There's like some gems and things like that. Uh, the base, I kind of made this like river of necrotic sort of goo. Some grass, some mud on there. And uh, I, yeah, I think it turned out really well. Um, I actually, with this guy compare, or this guy combined with my uh, Seraphon army, um, won me uh, gold actually in the local uh, shops painting competition. So that was pretty cool. That was neat. I feel like I'm not that great of a painter yet, but. It's cool to, to get a little bit of recognition anyway, I guess. All right, so this has to go into here. So already a little bit of a challenge to kind of fit this in here. That's kind of got, got to go in there like that. Okay, so what we'll do is put a little bit of paint around the edges here. Or not paint, a little bit of glue around the edges here. And uh, again, this is kind of my first experience with... Um, gluing things that have already had some paint put on them. And I was told to actually uh, go grab some Q-tips so I can kind of scrape some of the paint off. So I'm actually going to do that really quick. I'm going to go grab a Q-tip and I'm going to be right back. Hold on. Hold on, I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Okay. Just had to grab some Q-tips. We may need these later, um, or sooner, depending on how this, how the glue works out on this. And uh, yeah, neat. Oh, cool. Black Legion Chaos Army. That's sick. I'm just now getting into 40k. Um, playing a bit with uh, Semler, who you may know from the from Counter Strike and from the Overwatch League a bit more recently. Um, yeah, and I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how like consistently I'm going to stream this, so don't get your hopes up. But uh, I'd like to stream it fairly consistently. Glue's coming out kind of fast at the moment. Trying to hold it in a way where you can see it, but the angle's not very good with this piece. It's kind of a weird piece. All right, so that's the glue. So I was told the glue would kind of break down the paint, but I'm just going to stick it on here and see what happens. There we go. I may need to like right, raise the webcam or something like that. Because, yeah, I'm kind of... Let me just do this here. Hold on. All right, there. Okay, so now that's maybe more where you guys can see it better. It might be a little bit better. Yeah. All right. Yes, it is a Soul Dynasty shirt. That's right. Um, so this is going to be my test piece. I think this should stay in either way. It actually seems like it's holding uh, okay. But just because he told me to, I'm going to, one of the guys at the shop that's much more knowledgeable than I am, um, I'm going to try to do this with some paint, and uh, or I'm going to try to scrape this away. It doesn't look like the paint's really coming off, so I'm just going to stick it back in there. I don't know. I'm going to try more with this technique um, on some other pieces, just because I'm kind of uh, unsure about this whole process with doing the gluing first after I paint. I'm just going to put some Glue on the outside here, on the inside. Cheat a little bit, try to seal it in there. All right, we'll try that. So the nice thing is that that's going to just sit for a little while because I believe the next part we're going to need to do is going to um, involve some painting. So that'll be fun. All right. Yeah. So this is the next part. So we've got this thingy, but then this thingy, and so this thingy has a bunch of dials and gears and levers on it and stuff and that's that's not something I'm gonna want to paint once it's on the model so I think what I will do is actually cut the stuff out the parts out from that and then um, and then paint it in hand instead before I put it in so that's what we'll do all right um, yeah. Oh, and if uh, if I miss anything, like I, I don't expect anyone to sub. Like you probably shouldn't because I don't know how consistent I'm gonna be with this. But if you do and I miss it because I'm not using any notifications or anything, sorry. But enjoy your emotes. All right. But I, I would like to actually do this a lot more. Like uh, I, I do it so much that I might as well stream it. Right. Might as well just kind of hang out with you guys while I do this. All right. So now we're doing the little, little wheel things. See? Check it out. These are really, really tiny. Yeah. And so we've got to be careful with these. All right. And then we'll... So what I do when I cut it out of the sprue is I leave a little bit um, remaining. I don't cut right next to the piece when I pull it out. Because uh, if you do that, then you're just not going to get as good of a cut and you're not going to, and you, you know, you're probably just going to scratch it and then have to do extra work on it. So much easier to just come in here like this and drop it. Man, these are tiny, very tiny pieces. And just uh, cut these little things off here, there. Yeah, that's a little bit too long. Let me lower this one, a little bit more. There. Like I said, first stream. So I'm going to figure out everything as I go. All right, that's better. Wow, that's not very large at all. So that I will put in a place where I will not lose it, which will be right here on my little painting um, paper. Okay. You know, I probably should have painted these on the sprue, honestly. But what I may do is 
glue them in place and then paint them because uh, then it'll, they'll have like a better sort of base to paint off of. All right, so there we go. Little handles done. I like little valve handles. See? There you go. Yep. So this will be kind of like the joy of Warhammer painting. I'll try to be as Bob Ross like as possible. Yeah. Dry brush? Yeah, I do. I do dry brush pretty much everything. I wreck dry brushes. See, this one's kind of destroyed at this point. But don't worry. As Yoda said, there is another, and the other is brand new, so that'll be fun to use later. Okay, so next part, got to get the console that these are going to stick onto, but I need to find number eight first. Where's eight? Where is eight? Uh, might be on the other sprue. Yeah. All right. Number eight. Um, there it is. Okay. Let's see. So that there. Uh. See if I use the microphone on the on the actual webcam that's right in front of me, I could do some sort of like ASMR Warhammer stream like now I'm putting the piece together. I'm like moving to the other side of the microphone. I don't really see the appeal in that. It's kind of freaky to me. All right, let's see. So yeah, we're gonna cut the console out here. This is where the um, Caradron overlords steer their ship from. I think. All right, so here we go. So this piece, um, I believe. Yeah, okay. So that goes in front then. Okay, and that's what the other, the other, uh, the captain kind of holds on to, I think, from the pictures I've seen. Let's see. Be very careful here. Not too careful. The nice thing is that, because it's gray plastic and it's lead belcher undercoat that I'm using, any marks I put on here are going to be kind of forgiving, so that's nice. There. All right, that seems decent. I think for the smaller pieces, I should probably have this angled down a bit more. Right? Sounds good? Cool. Yeah, for 40K stuff, Phoenix, I'll probably, um, at some point I'm gonna be building the custodies, but right now, I'm kinda in the middle of this new year, new army thing, and so for, uh, for um, Age of Sigmar, and so that's where most of my Time is getting put right now in the hobby. All right. Yeah, so when you paint it on sprue, you get these like little marks like that. You see that right there? And that's easy enough to touch up with lead belcher. Later on, I can just go put a dab on there. But yeah, look at this right here. So this, this is something that I'm gonna need to paint off of the sprue, I think. But uh, what I will do first is I think Let's see, let me look at the illustration of this. Yeah, New Year 50 New Year Armies, it feels like that. Well, see, mine's an order army, so I can do different factions. That's the whole point there. So it's all right. So this is the console that I'm doing right now. So it's kind of looking like the valves are kind of a red, which is what I'll stick to. I'm going to stick to that. And I can make it shiny later with art coat, so it's kind of like uh, painted metal. So plan, and then we've got like a little bit of bronze in there. I can kind of probably use some um, gold for that. Some like dark gold, like uh, Geno's gold, or uh, this one. Yeah, Balthazar gold. That's what I'll probably use for that. And that should be good. So I think I'm probably just gonna paint this. I'm just wondering right now, do I put these valves on now, or do I do it after I paint it? Let's see if I put these on now. I'm gonna kind of sit like that. It's gonna be kind of annoying to deal with. So, yeah, I'm gonna wait and paint those a bit later. I could use a bit of sticky tack to hold them in place too. But for now, 
then I'm just going to paint these tiny, tiny little details. So hey, why not get started with some tiny details? There we go. Um, yeah, I'm just doing a Grand Order Army instead of a faction focus one. That's right. Yep, because I've got the Start Collecting for Seraphon. I've got the, um, let's see, the Order Harbinger, which is obviously Stormcast Eternals. And then for some of my battle line, I've got units of Liberators. And, uh, yeah, my commander right now is either the Lord Ordinator or the, um, or this guy, the Scar Veteran on a Carnosaur, um, depending on the scenario. This guy needs a little bit more work, but he's coming along. He's doing okay. I'm starting some of the layering on him. I like the, the way the face is turning out with him. Yeah, that's okay. Seems not bad. All right, there we go. So there you can check him out. All right, so painting. Um, let's see. I kind of want to use the artificer layer for this. I think I probably will. Um, either that, or I'm tempted to just use glaze. You know, I, I like the artificer layer, but I end up going back towards the glaze brush more and more for these tiny details. So I'm going to start with the artificer and uh, then see if I need to change that over. And again, I'm really worried about these valves getting lost, so I'm going to take them and I will put them um, actually on top here because that's not going to get bumped. All right, cool. So. Uh, what we'll do, I think it's probably going to be best, because I think what I'm going to do, yeah, okay, so here's the plan. Here's the plan with this one. Going to go Balthazar Gold, do the little parts, and then as I do those, um, or after I do those, I'll shade it with Earth, uh, Agrax Earthshade Gloss. Um, whoops, well, <laughs> I have to be careful shaking my paints, oh my gosh, terrifying, all right. Don't hit your new webcam, that's the key. Um, if you paint it a different color from the reference pictures, does it give it, a, give it different stats? No, it does not. Nope, the painting is completely up to you. Um, what affects the stats is what weapons you put on it, and a lot of models in Warhammer have uh, different options as far as um, what um, weapons you'll put on them. Uh, uh, why is it sticking? Come on. There we go. All right. For some reason, that was sticking. OK. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this on the brush. Should move this up so you can kind of see it there. Close it again right away. Add some water. I'm kind of rotating the brush as I do this so I can give it like a nice, hopefully nice tip. That's a, that's a decent tip. All right. I know these little parts here are that, so maybe you can't see that too well. Sorry, it's kind of a similar color to what already exists, but trust me, the color is going on there. And if I mess up, I can always go back and fix it up with ledge belcher, which is nice. But this is going on pretty, pretty cleanly. There. How's that? Does that look okay? Like as far as like, are you? Do you feel like you're able to see everything okay? Remember, I'm trying to get this so that um, people can kind of see what I'm doing here too. Kind of like trying to hit that happy medium of me being able to see things, and you guys being able to see things. That would be ideal. So. I'm kind of looking at this for reference. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to add some more color to some of these dials and things like that. Such a tiny part. I'm kind of just using the side of the brush right now so that I can Ideally, not mess up too much. Add some more onto this one. So this part is kind of up to me, like how I paint, how I decide to paint, like this part. It's kind of my choice as far as like what dials get painted and what don't. Whatever I think looks good. 
there. We got like a little bit, a little bit painted there. Kind of hard to see. This is sort of a rough part to start off with. But yeah, I think I'm going to go through do all that. And with these tiny brushes, when you're doing this kind of detail, um, when you're doing this kind of detail, you really need to keep washing your brush out, keep adding water. Otherwise, your brush is going to get wrecked. You don't want that. So again, just using the side of my brush to hit those high edges. The inside can stay um, silver. And what I'm going to do with that later is I'm going to darken that up with some shade. And that'll look nice. Just kind of hitting those edges. A little bristle going on there. Okay, deciding what else I want to change. All right, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna be the Bob Ross of Warhammer painting. Maybe. I will never be as good at painting as Bob Ross, probably, but I can try. And I should say something now like, and trying is the best thing to do. But it is, because if you don't try, then you'll never know how well you can do. See, that was inspirational. All right. Yeah, think this artificial brush, uh, or artificer brush, artificial brush, um, is nice because of the point you can get on it. But the bristles are so soft that sometimes when you get one of these little details, it kind of, bristles kind of get knocked around and you can't do as much. That's not really too well in focus, is it? Hold on, I'm going to fix that. Let me try that out because I'm ending up holding that closer to the camera than I thought I would. So let me see if I can make that better. One second. All right, we're going to go to webcam settings. And configure, video input. Camera control. Let's get it even closer. How's that? Hold on. Uh. There. That's probably good enough. All right, we'll try that. Sure. All right, I'm going to read chat for a second. Favorite mobile suit that I built? Probably the Shinanju. Shinanju Stein. It's pretty cool. Um, thanks, Aaron. Thank you very much. OGN Legion forever, man. All right, so uh, just to try different things, I'm going to switch over to the glaze brush. I'm going to set the artificer aside for the second. Change to a, a brush with a bit bigger bristles, but uh, ideally a bit um, stiffer. And I'm going to need a little bit more paint too, I believe. I'm going to grab just a bit off the uh, top here. See? A little bit, not a lot. I'm still pretty new to this, I think. There. Okay, and now we're going to paint this more. How's that? Is that better? Oh yeah, that's better right there. All right. I can see that better too, so that's good. I'm gonna paint the sides here. So Ghana's gold is sort of like a darker bronzier sort of gold, if that makes sense. I think I'm actually just gonna do those pipes with that too. So it looks cool. And because this is going to be, the back of this is going to be up against the panel, I'm not really going to worry about the back of it. I'm just going to kind of do the front of it. Tiny bit of water. It's always good to water down your paints. It keeps the coats going on smooth. And keeps the, uh, keeps from getting all like gloppy, you know what I mean? Yeah, looks pretty good. 
We're getting some detail in there. Yeah. I think what we can do, actually, is I'm going to do this pipe. The big pipes will be kind of as gold as well. So let me just get that in there. And I really love this hobby because for me, it's just very meditative. It's a way to just sort of like chill out and kind of get to focus on one thing very intently, right? Because like right now, whoops, right now, you got like social media and all that stuff going on. And you always want to like check the feed, see what's happening. And it's nice to kind of disconnect and just sort of like do something. And I know I'm saying this while I'm streaming on the internet to people. But at the same time, like, I'm not always going to be. There. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm going to go and do all the pipes like that. There we go. Yeah. Cool. I'll probably, like, stream some Overwatch and stuff, too, at some point. Um, but I just... I want to stream this for a while, you know. Alright. More water. Nice. Decent point on the brush. Decent enough. And it dries so fast, like you're noticing me touching it. That's okay, actually, because it dries so quickly. I'm just going to go in and get the rest of these little pipes and things with the Gehenna's gold. Just to give it more variation. I think this will look really sick when it's done. Yeah. It's going to look pretty awesome. And like this color scheme for this console is so forgiving because at a distance you're never going to tell if I mess something up. And up close the colors are still pretty similar that once I put the Agrax Earth shade on it's going to look pretty sick either way. But I'm like I, I'm having fun doing this part but I'm actually really excited about doing the little Caradron guys. It's going to be really fun. And, uh, yeah, if you do Warhammer painting and stuff, definitely, like, tweet your stuff at me. I'd love to see it. And, uh, I'll, I'll retweet it to other people. Not a lot. Like, I won't retweet all of them, because I don't want, like, spam people's feeds, right, with, my, with Warhammer stuff. Especially if most people follow me for Overwatch anyway. Um, let's see. So I'm leaving this little pipe, uh, silver, to add a little bit of variation. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to really put some color into here. A little bit down here maybe. Yeah. I'm trying to do all little arrows. Gehenna's gold as well. Yeah, just to kind of, again, like, just give it more variation, right? Make things stand out a bit more. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm gonna do one more little thing. And then this brush needs to get washed, because it's gonna... Otherwise, it's going to get kind of, um, oh, that's way too high. Oh, no. All right. If I lean my knees on it, or my knees, if I lean my elbows on it, I have to put up here. There we go. That's much better. wonder how long it's been off the screen. Sorry about that. Sorry, guys. All right. I'm just going to do all these, too. There we go. I may need to go up even farther. If I'm, because if I put my elbows up on the table, it gives me a little bit more stability. So, here's kind of where we're at with that right now. And you can kind of see that we've got some detail in there. See, here's what I should say, I'm like beating the devil out of this brush, but I'm not, I'm just washing it. Just take this brush and beat the devil out of it. Kind of a scary thing to say, but hey, Bob Ross can say anything. and It sounds like really nice and kind. Let's see, um, how's that? Look good? Yeah, I think it's a good place to start. Nice. All right. There, okay. So, that's done. So now, uh, here comes the tricky part where we're gonna glue these tiny little things in there. Um, so, what I will do 
is just trying to add like a little dab on the end. I'm going to paint these red, but I'm not going to do it like right now. Um, and I do not know how well this is going to hold. So we'll find out. There. Is that one? All right. And this is something where like I'm going to do it like this and then I'm going to come back tomorrow and I'm going to check it out and see how well it held. Um, there we go. Another one there. Oh my gosh, it's off the screen again. All right. Now the focus isn't very good either. So there's painting focus and then there's building focus I guess I'm going to need to do. Hold on, let me fix this again. Because I tried it with the, um, let me just go auto, see what happens there. Auto. See, auto and it wants to focus at the background. All right. Good enough. Okay, there. I'll just leave that open for now. All right, there we go. So how's that? So you can see I've glued a couple of those valves in there now. Uh, so one more. Just a little dab of glue um, right in there. And then we'll put the valve in. And like I said, with the paint already in there, I have doubts on how well it's going to actually stay. But we're going to put it in. We're going to leave it. Let's we'll see how it feels tomorrow. Yeah. There we go. All right. <laughs> Bob DOA Ross. That sounds sounds kind of scary, man. All right, there. Okay. So that part is done for now. Um, like I said, we're gonna go and paint those red later. Let's move on to the next part. Okay. So I think with this part. I should actually wait to put this in because this would go, this would go like right here. Yeah, it would go right there, and then the other piece would go behind it, like that. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's a lot of detail. All right, so I'll try this part now. All right. Putting a paint on here. Put a paint in here. Probably a bit too much paint. I generally end up using a little bit too much paint on a lot of these. But whatever. It's just how it is. Let me get this window out of the way for me. There. Okay, cool. So um, let's go ahead and try putting this on all right actually look that's already holding wow so maybe it will hold okay like I said I'm gonna do like a little bit of this today it's gonna be a short stream um, and maybe a couple hours because uh, uh, because I want to see if this gluing actually holds um, and I wonder if I put this in here, if I could paint. Oh yeah, I could still totally get at the dials if it's in here like that. Alright, so I'm going to try that. Um, yeah, I'm going to try paint, putting this part on too. Alright, so a little bit of glue on this part. Alright. And I'm gonna put a bit on the bottom too to help it stick in there. And like this, this glue, this plastic glue that Citadel has, it it is super glue to a certain extent, but it's not gonna like get your hands immediately stuck to whatever you touch. It's pretty forgiving stuff. So there, so there we go. The console is in there. These valves here are actually in a pretty easy place to get to when I want to paint them later. Um, so yeah, let's uh, move on.
this is already feeling pretty solid. I'm gaining some confidence that it may actually be able to go with the glue. Cool. I could be wrong. Let's find out. Uh, AJ13 says, can I tweet you my Gunpla stuff? Yeah, of course, man. I really love Gunpla, so uh, yeah, tweet at me. All right. So, there we go. Console in. What is next? Next are, looks like some of the side panels. Okay, so that'll be interesting. And 16 on top. Where is 16? Let's see. Sometimes you just can't end up finding parts for a little while, which is kind of annoying. I don't think that's how this is going to be, but it is how it is sometimes. All right, looking for a little valve type thing again, I believe. Yeah, like a little T-shaped valve sort of. Um, 16. Oh, there we go. There it is. 16 right there. All right, so trying not to get rid of that. I'm trying to keep it in the camera frame, and then we'll take we'll take nine out as well. This is nine. Not the big part. And I feel like I've gotten pretty good at painting around corners and things that are not like opportune. But I'm going to try to do it a different way. A lot, I've seen a lot of good results with uh, painting things um, off the sprue. So, or You know what I mean. Before it's all put together. So we'll try that out. All right. So I'm going to get that cut off there. And that's pretty clean. I usually like to sand it a little bit anyway. There we go. That's nice and smooth, so I can just touch that up with a little bit of lead belcher later on. That's fine. And so that'll end up going right here. Okay. Cool. I love all the little, like, uh, gizmos and things on this. It's pretty sick. All right. There. It's in. Hooray. Okay. Now, it's not the top to the glue at all. <laughs> there. Um, I really need to clean that out at some point. My glue bottle's getting a little bit messed up. All right. Let's clean up this piece here. And again, like I said, when you're cutting something off the sprue, you generally want to leave a little bit left over so you can make those finer cuts on the top and kind of make it nice and flush with the rest of the piece. All right. And I really love this sanding, this file here, because it's uh, round on one top, see? And then it's flat on the other side. So if you get a part like this, you can kind of use that round side to match it up there, which is really nice. And then use the flat part for bigger ones like that. And I never used to be big on um, sanding and all that stuff. I was too lazy, right? I would just uh, want to get it all done, but now I'm finding it. It does make your pieces look a lot cleaner. And uh, I've got a mold line remover tool here, but honestly, a lot of the new models, you just you don't really need to worry about it as much, it seems like. All right, so how does this go on? Oh, backwards. There we go. Hmm. Oh, I see it like this. Check it out. That's cool. All right. So... Is there anything that would block me? All right, so yeah, that would block me from getting at those valves. So I'm thinking to paint these nails. And the valves seem pretty solid, actually. Yeah, I'm kind of like trying to wiggle it with my fingers a little bit. Those valves we put on earlier, pretty good. So um, what I will do is take a break.
to do the bells. So I'm gonna go, let's see, what do I wanna do? Screamer pink? Nah. Um, screaming bell, that's tempting. So if I turn, here's kind of the color it's gonna be. Well, the, the color's not very good actually in the webcam. This, in my hands, it's much more of a purplish red. And I'm thinking it looks pretty good, but it might be a little bit too dark. I, I kind of want these to stand out, so I'm actually not going to go with a metallic color. I'm just going to go with Mephiston Red. We're going to make these things pop. Yeah, that'll be sick. And now I'm not going to hit the webcam as I shake my paint around. There. Let me read the stream. I'm going to catch up while I shake the paint. Let's see. Um, the dwarves gave you nightmares for weeks after? Why? Did I miss your earlier one? Oh, well. Oh, bowl over? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, because you can pile into the ship. It's really neat. Yeah. What's up, Love of Tears? How you doing, man? All right. Yeah, the Caradron did get nerfed a little bit, I think. Was it mostly in points value? I know I know these guys, the Gorstrock Thunderers, they actually got, like, a different War Scroll, I think. So they got changed quite a bit. Um, all right, so... Now, let's go ahead and keep using the glaze brush for this because, again, like, I, I love the tip you can get on the Artificer, but, like I said, I just keep going back to the glaze brush because, um, because the bristles are a little bit stiffer, and you can still get a good tip. So, you know how it is. Uh, yeah, oh man, I'm really liking this Mephiston Red. This is going to look sick. I think I've used up my quota of the word sick for the week now. But I really want those valves to kind of stand out because they're such a small detail that uh, I really want them to be able to be seen. So and we're not going to do the middle. We're only going to do the outside. So kind of think of like if you, you've ever been into like an old factory or something like that. A lot of the valves were painted red so they could be seen easier if you're doing factory stuff I guess is that on camera it is good All right so we're gonna do that with these two so we're doing factory stuff in the sky as a dwarf a pirate air dwarf Which is, which I gotta say, is totally awesome. And uh, I was, I was the type of guy that was really into um, Tailspin when I was a kid. If you remember that show, it had like Baloo the Bear from the Jungle Book. It had like characters from the Jungle Book, but they were like, he was like a bush pilot for like a resort or something. I don't know. It was very interesting. But yeah, check that out. Oh man, that looks really good. It excites me. But I have to be careful in my excitement that I don't take the model off the camera again. <laughs> there. That's better. Just being really careful to kind of hit all the edges. I'm using mostly the side of the brush here. And again, like, I keep getting water on it. Keep adding a little bit more paint to it. Get kind of a nice solid coat that way but a thinner coat. And the fact that, uh, the fact that it is lead belcher underneath, I think actually does help a lot as far as I, it comes through just a bit, and I think it makes it a bit brighter, which is cool. Unfortunately, right now with my lighting, for me, um, it's a bit tough to see into these little details. But I think it's. I think I'm getting all the edges I need to get. Like some of this might even be a bit excessive, because like, when am I ever gonna like turn the model over and look underneath, like this? That's what I've learned. Is that maybe, just maybe, it's okay to cheat with like the backs of these once in a while. All right, now I'm for the third valve. Um, yeah. Hey man, I'm glad I can help you forget about your stress. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of this stream. 
We're just going to chill out, paint some Warhammer, not worry about silly things going on in the real world or whatever. We're just going to enjoy some art. And that's, that's the best part about this. I'm washing this brush. I'm not done with this, but I'm washing the brush so that, again, the bristles don't get completely destroyed by dry paint. Because this stuff dries so fast, man. So, there we go. That's better. All right. Um, see, the cool thing, one of the cool things about Warhammer is that as uh, somebody who has a degree in art, and I've got a little bit too much water on my brush right now, actually. Dry that off a bit. Um, the is that uh, what I experienced in the art world towards the end of when I was getting my degree was that people weren't really too concerned about technique anymore. They only really cared about causing a reaction with their art, right? They were like, oh, I want to make somebody really feel something when I look at this. I want to shock them, you know? And you know, I, I feel like, uh, I, I've always been of the opinion that the thing that I've enjoyed being shocked by the most in art is like when somebody's technique is like good enough to shock me where I'm like, man, this person is doing things at a level that I can only aspire to be like, I would never, you know, be able to reach, right? Like when you, when you go to Italy and you see Renaissance art, you know, when you see like Raphael and you see, um, you know, St. Mark's in Venice, and you see the David, and you see, um, you know, the birth of Venus by Botticelli. Like, that shocks you, right? But not in, like, a, a revolting way. It shocks you in, like, a, a an odd sort of way, right? And so I get, you know, not, I'm not comp comparing Warhammer to Renaissance painting, of course, but I am saying that people's technique in this hobby shocks me at how good it is, and I really enjoy that because I feel like that is missing from the modern art world in a lot of places. Yeah. All right, so check it out. We've got the valves painted on there. I think uh, I think that looks pretty good. So we'll let that dry. And uh, it's probably already dry, honestly. And um, come back. And what I might do is add some stuff called Ard Coat to it, which just makes it shiny. And then it's kind of like that shiny painted metal. But already, I'm kind of liking where this is going. This is cool. As far as like how stable these pieces are, oh yeah, that's solid. Look at that. Glued that in there. It's holding the entire thing. Nice. Okay, so moving on to uh, this part, right? Because this is why we went back and painted the valves. Because when we put this part on, see, it's gonna make it would have made it a little bit too tough to get in there and, and paint that. So the question is now: Do I want to paint any of this stuff here? And I think. Because I'm not going to put the Dwarf Captain in, so I can still get in from these angles, so I don't need to paint any of this right now. Should be okay. Alright, so... Now I'm just going to put some glue on here. There we go. Let's do this. Let's get this piece on there. Let's hope it stays tomorrow. Alright. Put a little bit here. And I'm just gonna put some stuff here because like why not? I don't really know where all the pieces are gonna be. Is it gonna be like that? Okay. So I could probably put a bit on this edge as well. Alright. There. And that's probably a good amount to paint for that. I think it will be. Hopefully it will be. You know, I'm noticing my hands going over this way. Maybe I should move this part to here. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so I started out doing orcs in uh, Warhammer. This was the first guy that I actually painted completely. Um, and he could he obviously could use some work, but he's, he's okay. I'm kind of proud of how this guy turned out. This is the first one I ever painted. It's not bad. He's fun. Um, you know, 
But uh, then I, I started the New Year, New Army thing because I like the challenge of having like deadlines for painting stuff. What's it like to live with Mati? I don't know. I've never lived with Mati. Not sure. Um, you missed my wall cast? Well, thank you, man. I, uh, I do miss casting wall sometimes. It was a fun game to cast. But, uh, yeah, it was time to move on. It's kind of how it goes sometimes. Um, all right. Let's see. So that's on. That's good. And now we will do the other piece, which is 10 and 11. So I believe, yeah, it looks like 10 is right here. I'm going to move this off to the side. So 10. I'm trying to keep up the chat as best I can. So my apologies if I miss something. But the main thing is just me painting this stuff and you guys hanging out and hopefully enjoying it. To put the cat back on the glue here, you know I don't I don't really know how fast this glue dries out, but it seems better safe than sorry, right? I'm gonna keep this Mephiston red out because I'm gonna there's gonna be another valve coming for this part, and that valve is number eleven. All right, number eleven. Where is eleven? Oh, it's right here. Right there. All right. Yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, and if I see them, I will answer them. If I don't, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> but I'll try to see everything. I'll try to see everything. I'll look right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I am good people, I hope. Let's see. Um, yeah, the GG uh, is, it means good game. And that comes from, uh, well, I know it anyway, uh, as coming from StarCraft. When you finish a game of StarCraft, when you were losing, um, you would type GG, as in, good game, I give up, it's over. And uh, your opponent would type GG back. Um, and then if they were kind of a jerk, they would type GG easy. <laughs> but most people just type GG back, because they were just relieved that they won a game of StarCraft, which is the hardest game ever. So that's what that's from. Because um, a lot of us StarCraft guys had that in our names back then, and I just I just kept it because, like, you know, I kind of feel that way with every game I play, so. Just want to have some good games, you know? Alright. So this piece, let's see. I am hyped for Contenders Korea, man. It's going to be awesome. Uh, that was GNU slash Squid. GNU slash Squid? I don't know. Alright. And then, let's see, so this goes together right here. Oh yeah, that'll be cool. Neat, check it out. Man, I love the design for this stuff. Um, Alright, so let's put some glue on it. Because I think, yeah, this seems pretty solid. This other piece that I put on, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I should be pulling it like this, but I am because I'm testing it out. And the glue seems to be holding. So, yay. It's great. I kind of wonder when I'm going to run out of glue. I've had this one for a while. There we go. That should be enough glue, I think. There, I'll do that. Draw a little design with the glue. Um, oh, and I'm also going to put a bit of glue, just a dab right on this thing there. So that I can match it all up. There we go. It's like this part right here is the most important part to have glue on. And I'm just going to take a little bit of the glue back off. There we go. Maybe I should like turn my webcam slightly because I keep moving over here. Yeah, that's probably good. All right, but this seems to be holding, so that's good. All right, so we've got the center console and some of the stuff on there. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, we should probably push this down a bit. But, you know, because it's a big metal thing, it's actually kind of okay that there's lines like this. These lines are not bad. Um, because what I can actually do is I will just highlight them and make them look like they were supposed to be part of the panels that they're putting the ship together with all along. 
And that's kind of suggested by the way the rivets are right here, see? So that's okay. Just gonna put this on here, try to keep that a bit drier. But uh, yeah, okay, so that should be done, I believe. All right. Much more solid than I expected it to be with that paint, actually. That's very reassuring. All right, so now the next part is 14 and 15. So let's find those. Uh, well, here's 15. Does the glue smell? Um, yeah, it uh, it definitely does. And if I <laughs> if it uh if I get too much of a, a whiff of it, it definitely does make you a little bit uh, woozy sometimes. So you gotta be you gotta be careful that you're not going too ham with the glue. Don't want to give yourself like a headache or something. But uh, when you're spraying this stuff, as far as scents go, like when I'm spraying this stuff on there, definitely, definitely do it outside with good ventilation because you it's the fumes are insane. So you do not want to do that inside. Um, am I planning to do more Warhammer streams, or is just just one bit? I'm gonna I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna pretty much do a lot from now on. Is my hope. I forgot to put a valve on this side here. I gotta do that. Um, oh yeah, it goes right here. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to do this a lot, because um, I've been working on this stuff a lot in my uh, downtime. And I thought, hey, it might be fun to stream this. So push that in there. And so that uh, that little valve, I might leave that silver. I might do it gold later, but you know, I, could, I have the option to change it. So um, as far as the door goes, that's going to be silver. So that should be fine. So I'll leave that there. And I'm not really worried about getting myself in trouble with the, um, with the like, you know, little tiny corners I have to paint around because I've kind of gotten used to having to do that because of my habit of building everything before I paint it in any way. So if I end up in that situation, I have been in it so many times before that it doesn't matter. I can make it look okay either way. But I do think the superior way is to paint, um, uh, to paint before you assemble completely. But I don't want to do that, man. Oh, thanks for the sub. Uh, new, new slash, new slash squid. Thank you for the sub. Tier one. I have no idea what that means, but I appreciate it. Inspiring me to stream more often. Um, and I've got some ideas. Like, if the stream kind of catches on a bit, uh, I want to do like fun stuff with you guys, um, involving like models I'm painting and things. Like maybe let you guys choose which one I do. Um, you know, do like raffles for stuff I've painted in the future, but you know, just ideas. I don't know how far this is gonna go, but I'm just saying it could be fun. There's a regular sub, that's good. Oh, you've got the little Doa uh, thing by your name. That's neat, I forgot about that, yeah. Oh, dude, you've got uh, Kingdom Death Monster. I heard that was really hard to get, defunctory. Get my nails did, should I paint these? I probably don't wanna paint them with this though. <laughs> That'd be pretty hard to get off. All right, so let's see. It's going to be 15. 15 will be right here. So that's going to go like this. See? Check it out. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. So 15. Let's put a little dab in here. And then a bit around the outside. Not too much, because you don't want it to like squeeze out the sides, right? You want to have a pretty clean line. Um, and sometimes it does kind of squeeze out the sides, but if it does, you know, that's life. All right, let's see. I think... That's about right. It seems like it's in the right place. Sorry, I lifted that off the screen for a second. Yeah, it looks okay. It looks like a little dwarf head radiator. And who wouldn't want a dwarf head radiator? Yeah, what I'm building is the one in the lower left. That's the that's the plan. Yep. Yeah, I I know, right? That with the bankruptcy via Warhammer, it's it's real, man. You just want to you want to buy everything you possibly can get cuz everything looks so cool and you just want to make it all and then you realize, oh, I don't have the time to do like any of this, let alone play games. So 
then you have to dial it back a little bit. And uh, now I pretty much, I have enough stuff now that I don't need to buy another Warhammer thing for the rest of the year. I will. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm sure I will get more, but I don't need to. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Push that into the little indentation there. Cool, I'm liking it. Check it out. Dwarf radiators to keep you warm and give glory to the ancestors. <laughs> Something like that. All right. Neat. And again, so far, everything that has been glued involving paint has held quite nicely, so... So far, so good. Tentatively, I'm feeling pretty good about this process. It's the first time I've done it with, the, with uh, undercoating the spray on the pieces first. For those of you just joining now, um, so we'll see if that ends up working out or not. It might be a disaster tomorrow. Who knows? It's okay. Live and learn. I call it a happy accident, but in reality, that would be this would be more like an $85 accident, which is not quite as happy. All right, so now... Ooh, this is going to be a fun part. Okay, so now we've got the sides of the ship and the little rudder here, which you should not put glue on. No glue, see? Yeah. Alright. Super glue and jewelry together? Oh, I know, yeah. But no, this, this glue is not, like, if I got some of this, like, underneath the ring, it actually, it wouldn't be that bad. I could just pull it off. This, this plastic glue is not, it's not as strong as, say, where is it? Like, this stuff here that I use for the resin models, this stuff is serious business. This will kill you if you glue the wrong things together. And uh, I had to use that stuff. I had to use that stuff. Whoops. No, the Slan Star Master. I had to use uh, that stuff to uh, put together the throne for the Slan Star Master. Here he is. He's a chunky frog dude sitting on a floating throne. Pretty neat. He's not glued down yet because I'm going to paint inside here and, you know, this before I glue it. Someday, when I eventually get around to him. All right. Uh, let's see. Isk Snark says, Hey, Doe, I've got a full-on Chaos Nurgle and Skaven Pestilence in my army. None of my friends are interested in going in on army to play. Oh, it's a bummer, dude. Um, what I would do, there's, I found out uh, that there's a bunch of, like, smaller game types where you can run, like, very small armies and do, like, a little campaign with it. I just picked up the Blasted Hollow Hearth terrain set, and it actually comes with, like, a little campaign... That's based entirely around running warbands of no more than 35 wounds total. So if it sounds like you've got a pretty cool army ready. So what you could do is you could just split that up into a couple of smaller armies and then maybe get your friends to uh, play that way. But I feel you, man. It's hard for me to find uh, people to play with here, too. So I feel your pain. I've got a local um, Games Workshop store that I do most of my playing with. And then... Uh, a couple people down at the Overwatch League are interested in getting into it too, but uh, hopefully we'll get some games going with them at some point. It'd be I'd love to like do um, battle reports, like streamed games for you guys with the uh, with some of the other casters here. They get more into it. Again, like I'm not gonna promise anything, but I just think that would be cool. So hopefully we can do it sometime. Let's see, what's the third piece I need? I need five. Where is five? Where are you, five? Five? Are you on the other sprue? Ah, oh, yes. I think. Yep, here we go. I found five. Five is right there. All right. Cool. Rudder. Yep. I've got to catch up on Twitch chat in a second, as soon as I cut the rudder out. There we go. The air rudder. Um, when did I first get into this stuff? It was about uh, about six months ago or so. When I moved here uh, to LA, I found out there was a store close by, and I've always thought the hobby was pretty cool. 
so I wanted to get into it. I've been missing doing artsy fartsy things like painting, so here I am. Yeah, it's been about six months, and man, it's it's been great. Like, you know, every once in a while in life, you find a hobby where you're like, okay, and I'm going to be doing this thing in some way, shape, or form for the rest of my life. And that's that's definitely what uh, Warhammer, or at least miniature painting, feels like to me. Is that this is something that I will absolutely be doing for the rest of my life, uh, which is cool, you know, when you run into something like that. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to to stream. So again, I'm just going in, and I'm cutting off the little edges of the uh, the sprue here and I'm being very careful to kind of press down against this so I can get as close as possible and what I'm gonna do after that is I'm gonna go in with a file and I'm gonna make sure it's all nice and smooth because when I'm gluing it any little bit of plastic that's sticking up from the sprue and if you're curious about what the sprue is the sprue is this plastic part that all the other parts are attached to um, if any of that sprue is still remaining on here, then when I glue it, it's not going to lie flush. And then I'm going to have like gaps and it's not going to hold as well and it's a big, big pain. So, so I have that. And you can use like a mold line removal tool. Do something like this kind of. Get parts of it off. And that works if you got like a little bit bigger kind of thing. Um, but a lot of this a lot of the parts here, I believe, yep, like this, I can just use a file. Just go over a little bit like that. There we go. Yep, and then do I need to do any more here? Yeah, this could use a little bit. It's the only kind of filing I enjoy doing. Filing taxes, I'm not a huge fan of. Can't avoid it though. Well, I mean, you can avoid it, but then you eventually go to jail. Um, filing, I don't know, reports in college. I was not terribly good at that. But I play a lot of Halo, so hey, turned out well. And I'm pretty satisfied with this piece. Cool. All right. How do I compare this to building Gunpla? Um, totally different. I would say it, it's totally different. Um, and AJ13 is, is right uh, that I did uh, Gunpla a while ago, but I never actually painted them. Um, the closest I came is I used a lot of these uh, Gundam markers, see? Which are like paint markers. So I would do, you know, little designs here and there on them and, and add details, but I would never full on paint it like you would paint a Warhammer miniature. Um, but the, the, I think it's it's very different because with Gunpla, all the pieces just snap together. And the, you don't need any glue. And you're building a lot of moving mechanical parts, which is really cool. Um, but with this, it's a lot of, you know, plastic parts, gluing it all together, that kind of thing. So, wow, little Susie subscribed to Twitch Prime. Thank you, Susie. I appreciate it. I will not let you down. All right, let me see. How do I attach this here? Okay, so that'll be like this. Check it out. It's a yellow submarine. Well, it's a silver submarine. You get the idea. We all live in a silver submarine. Doesn't sound... Actually, that does flow off the tongue a bit nicer. We all live in a silver submarine. Hmm. I think the Beatles missed out on that one. It's a bit better than yellow. Alright. But anyway, let's glue this part down first, I think. Yeah, I think that seems like a good... I need to do it. And I just want to double check which pieces I need to actually apply glue to. Looks like these lines here, along here. Uh, that could use a bit more filing. And by filing it down like this too, I'm removing a bit of the paint so that the glue will affix better. A little bit better. Yeah. 
wow. Monty, thanks for the sub, man. You're the best. Now you can use Doa O and all the other Twitch channels. The OGN Legion lives again. All right. Yeah. So let's see. The fifth beetle. <laughs> Shouldn't you paint it before assembling it? I kind of have done that, uh, Tim Kiro, a little bit. Um, yeah, I actually have done that a, a little bit anyway. Um, see, I've uh, assembled, uh, I've painted a little bit on it before assembling some of it. Yeah, and I'll do more. Anyway, time to glue this big part on. And this part, frankly, guys, this part terrifies me because it is huge. And it is a major part to the model, and all manner of things can go wrong here. So, wish me luck. So, I'll probably need it. Just kind of putting some glue on the side here. And I don't need to put the other piece on right away. There. Um, because. The glue, what it does is it kind of melts, it melts the plastic a little bit, and so that helps it sort of uh, attach better. Which piece was I putting on again? There we go, this one. Just double checking, and yes, I don't need to do anything else before attaching. And that is that. Pressing firmly, but not too hard because it's not, you know, really attached totally just yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue along the back here too. So that it kind of run into the cracks a bit there. There. Don't know if you really need to do this or not, but I am paranoid about these pieces falling apart. I've never actually glued a piece this big together before. This is a first for me. And there comes a point where you want to just keep pushing on it because you, you can't, your mind can't believe that this is actually attached, but it is. So now the best thing to do is to just leave it and not touch it and uh, give it a bit of time. Um, and I believe I... So now what I need to do is put this part on here. There we go. See, this part's actually going to turn, which is kind of neat. It's going to be cool. Yeah. It is a party now, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Um, yeah. This is Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Sebjimort. Sebjimort. Yeah. But, uh, and we're painting the ironclad... Uh, no, not the ironclad. We're painting the Arcanaut Frigate. See when both pieces are in there, it's going to look at this. Check it out. Dwarf Prow. Hail to the ancestors. That's going to be sick. Um, but first, we will put this part in. There. And not glue that part in. That part's not going to get glued. All right. Guys, I think the time is now to put the rest of this together. All right. Let's try it out. Put the stuff here. Again, this is super scary for me because this is the part where if anything is going to go wrong because of the putting the paint on first, it's going to be this. This is the part that will go wrong. Um, remember, I'm kind of avoiding painting near the rudder. So. Let's hope that this works out. Oh man, here come the glue fumes. <laughs> There's a lot of glue. Don't worry. Old dough is not going to get high on stream. I don't think that's this kind of glue anyway. Alright, let's see. Alright. Okay. Uh, uh, pressing 
gently but firmly, being terrified that the whole thing's just going to break apart my hands right now. Stress. The chill of this stream is threatened by the stress of painting. Does this still turn? Yeah, it still turns. Okay. Whew. All right. All right. I think, you know, the lines could be a little bit cleaner, but from a distance. Because one thing you, you think about when you're building Warhammer, this is what my store manager, Shad, imparted to me, some of the knowledge he gave me, is uh, you talk about the three-foot rule, right? And that's where, how's it look from three feet? Because that's about the distance you're going to be away from it on the game board. If it, looks, if it looks okay from three feet, that's fine. If you're going for like a big award-winning piece, then you know you need to have it like right up here. But if it looks good from back here, as long as your camera's in focus, <laughs> that's uh, that's good. So hey, the rudder turns. It's not falling apart. I think we're okay. Um, this part right here, I'm a little bit unsure about, but I think I'm going to leave it. The glue, things are going to move around a little bit when the glue is not quite set yet. So I think it's fine. I got a message on WhatsApp. I'm not sure who it's from. Let's see. What's my uptime? How long have I been streaming? All right. So I'm going to, like, you can tell I want to keep, like, pressing it because I don't, my brain just does not want to believe that it's actually glued and it's actually turned out okay. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to set it down, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to let it, just let it set for a little bit, just let it kind of chill out, you know? All right. Is my phone around somewhere? I don't know, whatever. Okay, let's 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 uh, catch up on chat. Doa, do you use green stuff for the mold lines? Um, normally I use the mold line remover for the mold lines to take those off. If you mean the, the lines between things, like right here you can see these lines right here um, I might I might use a bit of that green stuff to fill that in later but then again to be completely honest I I think a mechanical object like this would have seams if it was like a big ship it would so I may actually just highlight them because that's the that's the alternate take right you can try to hide them or you can just bring them out and say, this is part of the construction of this vehicle, you know, and add a bit of a lore element to it. I don't think that's always the answer, but it's, it can be sometimes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, my phone is on my desk over here. Hold on, let me get, let me get rid of it. All right, let's see. Hmm. Alright, there. Okay, so, next part. Um, so this is good. So we've got the core of the ship together, looking cool. Now what we're going to do is um, this little thing. More like a little propeller wing thing. I think that's the official term. Where's my microphone? Asks uh, Juice of Sauce. It's right here right here. I've got the Razor Siren, and it's uh, working pretty well so far. And you're a sub too, so thank you. Thanks, buddy. All right, so now we will do more constructing. Not of pylons, but of uh, parts to this Arcanaut frigate. So we need 27, 28, and 29. So where are they? 20, doesn't look like they're on this sprue. There we go. I'm being more gentle with the screws than usual um, because I've got these painted right, so I don't want to get it too scraped. Uh, here's 29. Aha! So we'll cut that one up first. I'll make sure to put my hands in front of the camera each time so you can't see anything. I'm still working on this process, but I think it's going okay. A cool propeller thing here. All right. And where is the next part? I need 27 and 28. 27. Right here, right next to it. Sometimes on the sprue they're right next to each other, and sometimes they're like way on the other side, so you never know. 
and 28. Where is 28? Here it is, 28, right there. I'm sure like chat is already reading it and they're like, oh, it's right there, man. All right. Boom, it's out. Okay. So I'll show you, um, just because we're kind of waiting for this to dry a little bit more. Um, I'll set this right here so you can kind of see it a bit better. Um, one of, some of the things I've also worked on in the past that I can show you um, are like uh, this was one that I did uh, as part of my Seraphon start collecting. This is a Saurus Knight on a cold one. And a cold one is apparently like a little dinosaur, like a velociraptor. So the base is sort of like this mud texture with uh, some green dry brushing over it. And then uh, I used a green shade to kind of get into recesses and try to make it look sort of like a muddy, mossy, sort of swampy thing that he's going through. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Thank you, Yorb. I'm glad my voice is soothing to you. Yeah. And uh, so actually, I can move the webcam over here a little bit to do this. So there's uh, some other Saurus Knights there. Oh, that's terrible. That's not working out at all. All right. Whatever. You saw them. They're over there. <laughs> Trust me. And uh, yeah, then I did. These are the kind of little grunt dudes, Saurus warriors. Kind of have them on sort of a sandy base. You got that cool mace. The Seraphon are neat because they're kind of like uh, they're kind of like dinosaur people who ride dinosaurs, which is a bit odd but interesting. And they have kind of like an Aztec vibe to the construction of their stuff, which is kind of cool as well. Like if we go back and we look at the Carnosaur again, I like just the way the throne is and all that stuff that he's sitting on. I love this thing. I still need to do a lot of work on it, but. I think it's turning out really well so far. Yep. Neat. Show them your erotic models. <laughs> no, those are just for you and I. I told you that already. Why can't you keep that stuff between us like you promised? <laughs> uh, let's see. So what else? That's, that's about it. I think things are dry enough. We can, we can continue. All right. So... Um, Oh, and I have, I do have some 40k stuff built, like uh, this one I need to paint yet, but he's already base coated. This is a Virtus Praetor, Adeptus Custodes. Very, very awesome. Very cool. And then uh, guys like this, um, the Custodes Captain in Alaris Terminator armor. I really can't wait to paint these guys, but I'm going to wait to paint my 40k stuff until after June because I'm doing the sort of six month process with my Sigmar army and I don't want to kind of lose track of that. Um, but yeah, that's some of the other stuff I'm working on. As we continue on the Arcanaut Frigate. So I'm just cutting again the little sprue pieces off. There we go. And this is a, this is actually a Gundam cutter thing. And it's old, like you can see, it's kind of like beat up, but man, this thing cuts so well. When I, the next time I'm in Korea, or I could probably just order it online, but the next time I'm either A, in Korea hanging out, or I'm B, online, I should order another one of these, because these are really like the best clippers I've ever used. They just never seem to go dull. They're always, they always cut super close, and uh... They're also like heavy duty. Like, look at this. Look at this piece of sprue here. There. Look at that. Just destroyed it, man. It owned it. Look at that. Absolutely wrecked it. In a good way. Right. So now this is where we want to bring the mold line tool in. I keep holding things off the camera. I want to kind of scrape this off a little bit. And we're removing a bit of paint, but again, you know, we can. We can fix that later. Eventually, one of the less fun things with building this model is going to be going in and fixing all the uh, places where we scrape the paint off a little bit. That's okay. 
just making this a bit smoother there. All right. What kind of wedding band do I have? It's uh, well, that's a personal question, but I'll show you. Why not? It's um, like this. It's gold, like most of them are, and it's kind of beaten up. I don't know. Well, it's got this like beaten metal pattern, which I kind of like. But yeah, that's it. It's very comfortable. Doesn't get in the way. All right. Let's see. Have you been to the jungle? To jungle in Little Tokyo? No, I have not. No. What do I think about Warcraft Three? Remastered? I don't know. Is that happening? That'd be cool. I never played a Warcraft 3 originally because um, I was... At the time when Warcraft 3 came out, I was in the middle of finishing up my uh, major in college, so um, I didn't actually play, which is kind of sad. Uh, let's see. Alright, so this goes like that. And then the thing goes on the end here. All right, this may not need much glue. It'd be cool if this turned, but it's not really constructed to turn. So that's okay. I'm just going to glue it in. What did I major in? I uh, I majored in art. I uh, Well, I had a double major, actually, in art and uh, studio art and communication. So I focused mostly on um, fine art, so like oil painting, and, um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, although I was really into comics, like doing comic book art. Um, so I thought maybe, you know, that'd be something I'd want to do someday. Um, there we go. But uh, on the communication side, I was always, always, I was always really interested in interpersonal communication. And um, part of that was also... Uh, film and television production too, so something that actually did relate to my career now, which is kind of nice. I mean, the art stuff does a little bit, but, you know, I, I worked as a graphic designer for a year, and in doing that, I kind of discovered that I wanted to keep art as more of a hobby than a job, and so... Now I'm quite happy to just do things like this. I work on the covers for my brother's uh, science fiction fantasy novels, which are really good. Um, I've tweeted them before. I'll, I'd share a link if I was near my computer, but I'll do that later or something. Um, yeah, so that's neat. Cool, like a little propel propeller thing. All right, nice. I'll catch up on tw Twitch chat again. Let's see. Guest artist on an owl comic, that'd be cool. Maybe, maybe someday. <laughs> All right. Ah, Antinori is a second year art major. Sweet, that's cool. Hobby is the worst part of Warhammer? No, man. That's uh, that's my only part of Warhammer room most of the time. I mean, uh, if you're, there's, there's two types of, or there's like many more than two types of people that are into Warhammer. It's, you know, some people are the gamers. And those are the people that get their pieces, you know, commissioned, painted by somebody else, or they just, you know, you don't need to have a piece painted to play with it. You just need to have it put together. This guy, you can play with him. He's not painted. That's fine. So you can be into the game. Um, or you can be, you know, like me and be more into the painting and the technique side of things. And that's what's cool about it, because the hobby has just, like, a lot of stuff for a lot of different interests. So, now... We will attach this to here. Do you know that Sneaky is cosplaying as Lux on Twitch stream? And I know I did not know that. Good for him. Sounds like a lot of fun. Let's see. Oh, this is going to be another good test for the paint to see if that is going to stick or not. Yeah. Yep, I like putting them, uh, building them and putting them together personally. Um, oh, going back to the Warcraft 3 thing. Yeah, I... Uh, I never really did get to play it, unfortunately. Um, I've gone back and played a little bit since, but I'm terrible, obviously. So, if there did get to be this like new interest in the game, I would absolutely uh, jump back in and try it again. That'd be fun. Maybe like new graphics or what it would take for me to jump back into it. It was it's weird because I I did cast part of the last big Warcraft three tournament ever in China for WCG back in 2013. I want to say it was. Um, 
Monty and I actually casted some of that. We were there for League of Legends, but we also casted some Warcraft 3. And uh, that was that was quite the event. That was very emotional. Um, you know, and again, like, I wasn't part of that scene. I can't claim to feel all those same emotions that those guys did, but, you know, there was one where I, th- I want to say it was, like, Sky and uh, the Korean player Sky and another uh, Chinese player in Warcraft 3. And it was like a semifinal match or something. And after the match was over, like, they both just immediately got on the booths and ran over and hugged each other because they knew that that was, like, you know, probably the last professional match they'd ever play against each other. And, and so that was a big moment for these guys to be a, been in Warcraft 3 for a long time. And, you know, even if you're not into the scene, that's certainly an event that you can appreciate. So it was really cool to be a part of that. I'm very grateful and thankful that I was able to be there for that. All right, looking for number four. Number four. Oh, there's four. Here we go. Four. All right. And uh, as far as, like, how often I'm going to stream like this, I want to do it fairly often, at least, you know, once or twice a week. But I just can't promise any sort of consistency right now, you know. So I appreciate all you guys that are here. And uh, at least, you know, follow so that when I do, you know, it pops up and you know. Um, or at least, you know, follow my Twitter and my Instagram because I'll, I'll be posting notifications on Twitter when I stream and, like, I'll be doing stuff on Instagram too. Instagram is actually where I put most of my Warhammer pictures now because my Twitter is still mostly esports, so I don't want to flood it with non-esports stuff yet. Um, so right now, Instagram is kind of my hobby, social media. All right. Let's see. Yeah, DACA. I learned what that term meant earlier. <laughs> hey, Silent Night. Hey, what's up? It's been a long time. How have you been? I loved all your uh, photoshops back in the day. Let's see. All right. So number four. Yeah, this goes right here. There we go. Nice. It's gonna be pretty easy to put in there. Finally, a stress-free piece. And this this is not falling off, which is fantastic. I'm so excited that that is not falling off of my model right now. This glue is pretty great. Now, I really wonder if over time the glue is going to weaken because it's kind of doing some paint and some plastic and then it's going to all fall to pieces but today is not that day apparently all right push that down firmly but gently again you don't want to mess things up see i got a little bit of paint on my fingers there but that's okay you can just kind of rub it as far as super glue goes this is the less super of the glues super enough all right so there we go Got that part done. This doesn't spin. It just sits in place, but that's okay. It doesn't need to spin. Ooh, that looks cool already. Check that out. Wow. That is awesome. You know, if I ever get a boat, I'm going to put one of these right on the bottom to scare fish <laughs> or, or scuba divers. I don't know. <laughs> you probably shouldn't be under a boat if you're a scuba diver. That sounds kind of dangerous. Um, but the fish are generally okay. All right, let's see. So next part is going to be doing the uh, this thing, this thing for the other side. And those pieces should be easy to find. It should be 30, 32, 31. And it is. Nice. All right. Hey, what's up, Bren? How's it going? <laughs> Don't make me ban you, man. Yeah. What made me get into Age of Sigmar over 40k? Uh, from Exertion, or Exerian, not Exertion, ex- Exerian, okay, that's a good question, because um, honestly it seems like more people overall, in my experience, are interested in 40k, um, but I, my, all of my Warhammer experience before now, before getting into the hobby, um, was through the uh, Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning MMO, which I loved. That game was amazing. I'm so sad it's gone. Um, I played a bright wizard in that game, and I just lit everything, including myself, on fire, which was really fun. Um, 
But yeah, that so that so I was familiar with the Warhammer fantasy universe is what I'm saying. So when I went into the shop and decided for the first time, you know, like what my first army was gonna be, um, I chose Iron Jaws for my first army, like this guy right here. Um, my knowledge of Warhammer was based on the MMO, so that's kind of where that's how I ended up settling with that. But 40k is so cool. Like I, I. I always thought the, the universe of 40k was really neat, but none of the models ever really grabbed my attention until the uh, Adeptus Custodes came out. And just like the cool, really hyper elaborate golden armor. And the way that like, uh, with these, with the Custodes, these guys, you, they're so powerful on your own that you can field an army of very few units, which for me, who has a very limited amount of time, Getting to spend a lot of time making one unit look really awesome is way more fun for me than painting like a dozen of these guys, which is what I did for these guys, but not something I want to do again. <laughs> so that's kind of why I uh, picked them with 40k. But yeah, again, I'm probably, apologies if I'm not holding stuff up in front of you well enough. I've never done this before. I'm trying. I'm trying. There. I really like the design on the rotor. Check it out. Look at that. It's like a nice little... So what I can do is I can go in here and paint some of this gold. The little edge highlights gold. Um, on this side, actually. You can see it better. And then that'll make a really cool little effect there. Yeah, the Horus Heresy models look really neat, actually. And that's Horus Heresy, not Horse Horse Heresy. Gotta watch out for those heretic horses. Alright. So a little bit of glue in there. And we'll put these two parts together. There. Ooh, a lot bit of glue maybe. That's eh, okay. There's a little bit extra glue in there. Whatever. Cling to the three-foot rule. If it looks good from three feet, you are okay. And then I will put a bit more on here. A bit more on the sides there. Yeah. Should be good enough. And... Ah, there. Sweet. All right, another rudder completed. Um, but I have to be careful because right now this part, these two parts are not dry. So I'm going to actually have to leave this uh, sit for a little bit. So leave that sit for just a few seconds. Let that sort of firm up. And then we'll go on to the next part. I'll check out Twitch chat again. Um, let's see, have I had a chance to check out Vermintide 2? Um, I've always wanted to play Vermintide 1. Like a bunch of us casters actually bought Vermintide 1 and then we never played it. So we gotta actually uh, do that before we move on to um, Vermintide 2, I think. Yeah. The Imperial Guard is really cool too. Uh, Similar is actually doing an army of Imperial Guard right now. Yeah. I'll get to Vermintide too. It'll be fun. Alright, um, let's see. So, while we're waiting for this other part to dry, we'll move on to the next part, which looks like it is a cluster of bombs, which is kind of interesting. Alright, 19 is going to be this piece right here. 19, and then we're going to attach these bomb parts. So, all right, let's do this. Cutting it out of the sprue. And dropping it on the mat. Let's see, and then I need uh, 20, 21, 22, 23, 20, 21. There we go. 21 and then 22 23 is like a two-part thing I need to put together oh there it is oh wow that's really tiny very tiny parts here all right 23 try not to clip my finger there we go which I have done and it's not not a ton of fun and 22 and again like you need to rotate the clipper sometimes so that you um, can leave a bit of the plastic sprue remaining on the end so that you can get a nice clean cut when you 
actually go through and get the piece ready to glue on. Um, let's see, yeah. So as I do this little bomb part, and one of the things I love about this is it really is it really is kind of Bob Ross esque in that you know you you really are just kind of doing your own thing with Warhammer as far as painting goes. Um, and how you choose to paint your army, um, how you want them to look, the story behind your army, is really up to you, right? Which is kind of neat. They've got, they've got cool guides that you can follow. You know, they, if you want to do a certain paint scheme that you see on the box, there are guides for that. But if you want to just do your own thing, that's okay too. As long as, you know, learn a bit of color theory, but, you know, once you know the color theory, you're all set. Reading Twitch chat again. Uh, yeah. Happy little heretics. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. Happy little Nurgle demons. Uh, let's see. So this is a crazy little cluster bomb type thing. I don't know. And it goes together like this, I guess. Oh, like that. Oh, that's neat. Okay. So, take the top off the glue again. You can see there's some glue in the cap. I need to actually fix that at some point. All right. There's a little bit of glue on there. Don't need much at all. And I'll kind of twist it a bit. So it's, oh, oh no. Oh, tragedy. All right, there we go. See, when you work with parts this small, sometimes just like, the basic little oils you have on your fingers can actually stick to the part because they're so light. So that's why you don't press too hard because the parts can actually stick to you. So there you go. Neat. That doesn't look comfortable at all. All right. The iron pineapple. All right, so now let's cut the little sprue pieces off of this one. Uh, let's see. Paint the devil out of him, right? <laughs> I will. I did a little bit of painting earlier. Right now it's mostly assembly. We're gonna get into the painting in the next uh, in the next episode or two. Is when we're gonna start really painting a lot more of this. But uh, for now, the only painting we needed to do was on that little center console that was gonna be covered up by some of the. Um, that was going to be covered up by some of the like pipes and railings and things like that. And that was, in case you're just joining us, uh, right here. You can see some of that center console. We painted some of the pipes and things gold. We painted the valves like a red. And then I'm going to put something else on those valves later to make them really shiny and like pop out. That'll be cool. Oh, and uh, now I'd say we're ready to actually put this part on here. So let's actually do that. Yep. Hmm. All right. <laughs> there. Glue. And now we will put this on. And I press again like not don't press super hard, but you know hard enough and like this is still not totally dry like I can feel the this part twisting a little bit but I'll hold it here and this part oh yeah that's pretty firm now on the other side that's good all right and so that looks pretty neat actually I'm liking it I'm liking how this is coming together so for now we're just gonna lean it like this yeah, I want to lean it so it doesn't lean on the part we just glued. Push a little bit more. There we go. I think we're okay. Other piece. The other piece seems stable, so I think we're think we're set there. All right, back to the bombs. So, um, what? Hmm. Susie, I did talk about your sub. I think is that what you're talking about? I don't know. This stream would be much better if Doa shaved his arms. They're not that hairy. Come on. Look at that. That's pretty... I think that's pretty uh, 
pretty light <laughs> as far as arm hair goes. Not that I'm an arm hair expert, but you know how it is. Unless you don't. Maybe you don't know how it is. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue in here. Monte Cristo, arm hair expert. All right, and then it looks like, uh, oh, okay, I see. So each one of these is a little bit different so that you don't accidentally glue the wrong one in the wrong place, which is kind of nice. There we go. Another little bomb that will drop out of the side, supposedly. And then, oh man, look at this tiny little thing holding that on. That's, that's nerve-wracking. There we go. I'm going to have to hold that for a second or two. I need to moisturize? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's tough, dude. I do. Like, I do actually use, like, uh, hand lotion and stuff like that, but the issue is that it's just so dry here during the winter that it doesn't help too much. See, I've never had my fingernails judged quite so harshly. Th this one's a little bit uneven, but it's, it's cut okay. I don't know. You can't really see it on the broadcast, so that's fine. So anyway, there we go. The bomb rack has been completed. And I'm not touching this one at all because it's only holding on there by a tiny little thing, and if I touch it, it will probably just fall off. So that will sit there for a while. Um, all right, so that's the one for this side. So I'm going to move that over here, and now I need the other ones. All right. Here we go. There. So I put my stream as IRL. Is that the right one, Susie? Answer me this. Oh, person imbued with the wrench icon next to their name. Let me know if IRL is the right place to do this stream or if I should do it somewhere else. Oh no, my bomb. <laughs> I dropped the bomb. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was terrible. That was terrible, but what do you expect when you come to the stream? Alright. Tomorrow is going to be my day off. I don't know what I'm going to do. But uh, I'm probably going to hang out. Well, definitely going to hang out. With the uh, with Mrs. Doa, because she just got back from Korea very recently. We haven't gotten to hang out a lot, so probably won't stream tomorrow. But if I do, it'll be on my Twitter feed. So if you follow me on Twitter, you will know. How's that? Can you see that? There you go. All right. This is such a tiny piece, like, is it even worth it? Is it even worth it? Like, uh, filing that down? No one's ever going to see that tiny piece. I don't know. I guess you could just call me a perfectionist, who knows. Change him to creative? Do you think that's right? I don't know, hold on. I need to see something in Twitch chat. With my wireless mouse here. Um, creative? Creative, oh, okay. I'll do that next time. Yep. Let's see. Yeah, I'll set us up the bomb. You have no chance to survive. Make your time. Is this the right one? Yeah. There we go. All right. Oh, see? I want to put my elbows up, and then I just push everything way off the screen. All right. There we go. This bomb, the second bomb is completed. And now, as it dries, we shall cut the sprues. So I'm not doing quite as much like filing down and stuff like that because it's uh, these parts are kind of on the underside of the ship and you're not going to see them as much and they kind of fit in pretty pretty well anyway so it's not quite as vital. And you want things to look good but you also want to save some time, right? Alright, so there we go. So that's good. So now it's time to glue these into place. There you go. Oh, good night, Susie. See ya. 
later. All right, put those in place. I love that emote. It's great. <laughs> Need a little bit more glue on here. All right, that's probably enough. And that should stick. And again, like the plastic is so light that once you glue something in there, just leave it. Don't mess with it too much. Because all you'll do is make it fall off again and uh, stress yourself out. We don't want to be stressed while we're doing Warhammer, the hobby. We want to be chill, right? So let's be chill. All right. And so I will just set this in here. This is one where, ah, oh, no, see, it's such a tiny little thing holding it on there that. It's tough to get it to stick the first time. There we go. All right, so again, not going to touch that one. I'm going to let it sit there. Cap the glue again for the moment. I think it's probably good to do that. Yep. Rub the, gl the glue around on my fingers. That's what it'll be. Chill hammer. Oh, yeah, I should definitely call that. That's a great idea. From now on, it's not going to be dough hammer, it's going to be chill hammer, because that's what this is. It's going to be the uh, chill Warhammer stream. It's my hands in front of the webcam randomly. There we go. Oh, and uh, this is the base it's all going to sit on eventually. It'll be like this. The bomb has been planted. Dude, I used to play so much Counter-Strike back in like 1.6. My college friends and I would just play like all night, every night. It was great. And then I didn't play it since then. <laughs> I like watching Counter-Strike, but I, I've never played it since then. Warhammer time? I like Chillhammer. Seb Jamort is, is, uh, has got it, man. I think Chillhammer is going to be the name of the stream. Look at this. This is turning out pretty well. Not bad. All right, so now we have to attach the bomb things. So this one should go in this side, I believe. Like, like this? Yeah, that looks about right. All right, cool. So what I will do is I will put glue around the outside here, because this is something I'm not going to really want to um, press in. It's going to be something I'm kind of want to, going to want to like set on the edge and just sort of leave it. So I'm just going to. I'm getting a little bit of glue on the outside, but again, that's not... All right, I'm just gonna turn this. There we go. So that's why I always end up holding it anyway, there. So yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the outside. All right, it's a lot of extra glue on there. Yeah, now the paint's kind of coming off a little bit. All right, but again, I'm not so worried about the paint um, coming off a little bit here because that's something I can just clean up later with more lead belcher. So, yeah, let's see. Already, it's going to hold pretty well. You can see there's a little marks on there, but that's not a big issue. All right, so since I, I do want to try to avoid those marks if possible, it's not a huge issue, but it's just kind of more convenient if I can't. So this time... Is it possible for me to put the paint on the underside of this? Probably is. I'm gonna do that instead. It's like a big part. A big part of the hobby is just experimenting. You know, trying things out, seeing if they work, fixing it up if it doesn't. Um, this I can just slip right in here. I'm getting. I'm getting uh, glue all over my fingers right now. That's okay though. Because like I said, this, this glue is not like super crazy super glue. So I can just wash it off later. There. Alright, you can see a little bit of the paint coming off there too. There we go. Should be good. The bomb has been planted. Yeah, Lead Belcher is like the dark silver that uh, this was. 
Where's the... Where's my mouse? Thank you, that Haynes guy. Appreciate it. There we go. Um, I want to see Doa do a Primarch or a Titan. Um, I'm actually very slowly working on Guliman. Um, and he's, he's not here right now. He's actually at the Overwatch studio, but... I'll probably, when I start painting him more, I'll probably put him on stream, bring him home and do that. So that would be fun. But uh, yeah, check it out. Bombs are on the bottom. That's all in there. The rotors are on the side. Um, so now, our next part we're going to do, we're getting pretty close. In fact, we are almost done with this first part here. And that's probably where I'm going to finish it, um, was when we finished this first part. Um, oh, I'll give you a quick look at, here's my painting thing. So I've got base, shade, layer, and then technical paints up here. So I like to have an organized setup. It's like the only time I, I like being organized in my life, actually. It's the only time I'm able to be organized, it feels like. Um, so now, we've got some guns to put in, in the bottom. See? These? No, not those. These. These guns. All right. So let's see. I'm just kind of keeping an eye on Twitch chat as well. But now we're going to do the guns. So where are those at? All right. So we need 35, 36, and 37 times 2. So here's 35. 35. All right. So, 35. Let's see, 30, where's 36, 37? Oh, okay, here's 37. I'm trying to make sure I don't drop it too much in there. 37, 35, and 36, there we go. Yep, and that's the only three pieces I need for that. 35, 36, 37. And now I need it on the other side. So here is 35, because this is a 2x, so we're making two of these guns. So 35, and then 37. I'm trying to hold that in place there. There we go, 37 and 36, right here, putting my elbows up again. All right, well, you know, actually what I do usually is I usually lower my chair a little bit because then I can keep my back straighter. Feels better. Uh, who has the biggest collection, me or in control? Ask the little alien. Definitely in control. He's been doing this for years and years. I'm, I'm just getting started. I've got a lot that I need to learn from that guy. Let's see. And he's actually out there winning 40k tournaments and stuff. He's apparently really good. I was watching him, um, I was watching him, uh, do the review of the Tau Codex today. I don't understand a lot of what's being said yet with that, but it was cool to kind of like hear the analysis for it. That was kind of neat. Ah. So much glue all over. All right. Whew. Oh, he doesn't do any of the hobby stuff? Yeah, I kind of got that impression. All right, let's see. So 37 goes on 36. Like that? Oh, okay, I see. Little dab in here. Putting the gun together. Like that. Ta da! Easy enough. And then that goes into here, I'm guessing. It does. Alright. So, a little bit of glue. down in there. Alright. There. 
And then I, I really like that they have a square peg down on the bottom of this so that uh, you can't really twist it around. Helps keep it in place much better. Um, and uh, that actually, apparently, just gets shoved in here. Oh my gosh, this is really scary. Oh my gosh, oh, I have to push it in. No. All right. Can I just leave it like that? Do I have to push it anymore? Okay. No, I don't. That's good enough. I believe that's good enough. Man, that is not moving either. Wow. I just do not want to push it in any farther. I'm so afraid. Oh, no, but it, it does look like it goes in further. All right, guys, we're doing this. We're doing this. No. Oh, I just can't. I can't do it. I'm too scared. He said as he continued to try to push it in. Oh, no. Oh, that's all right. That's It's good enough. It looks great, doesn't it? That looks great. Okay, I agree. I'll leave it like that. Wonderful. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm so... I do not want to, like, push that in there. It looks like you're supposed to push it in so it, it, it like, slides around and stuff, but... Man, I do not want to do that. I'm just picturing the entire thing just shattering. Because the glue isn't totally set yet. And all my night's work just going away. Me just, like, raging. Getting onto r slash livestream fails. No. Not tonight. Let's avoid that. All right. <laughs> Dirty Randy TV. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I'll probably be streaming a bit more. I hope so. That's the that's the plan. And when I say a lot, like, not like a lot, a lot, but, you know, occasionally. Mostly just kind of for fun here and there. I don't, I honestly don't really like streaming myself playing games very much. But, uh, this, I think, could be a lot of fun, so. Yeah. Yeah, alright. Okay, here we go. Put another one of these in. Oh. 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 <laughs> no. All right, so these both went in approximately the exact same amount, and so I'm going to call it a day. Like, look it. That's not going anywhere, all right? I think it may be because I, uh, I spray-based it first, um, and so it's a little bit thicker and a tighter fit than it would normally be. But I don't know about you guys, but I think this looks just fine. And uh, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. I cannot, I could not imagine pushing that any harder without actually breaking something. That was the scariest, that was like one of the scariest moments in Warhammer I have ever experienced. So I'm glad you guys could be here for that. That was absolutely terrifying. But this is starting to look pretty good. We've come a long way tonight, haven't we? Um, all right, so one more piece, and then this uh, this top part will be will be done. Um, and that is one last little um, rudder-looking thing, and that is on the other sprue. So let me swap here. All right, and I know it's uh, thirty-three and thirty-four. Okay. The long nightmare is over. All right. Man, that was scary. Dude, like seriously, when I was pushing on that, I was I was terrified that I was about to destroy this model. There's 34. And I still might. I still might destroy this model in a different way. You never know. I'll show you uh, one. See this guy? Look at the look at how bubbly and bumpy he looks. Like it, there's no detail really on the face or anything like that. That's because I messed up on the white spray paint. I didn't shake it enough, so it got really like powdery and bumpy. 
And trust me, it looks a lot worse in person than it does on stream, but like this this model is legit ruined. Like I'm never gonna be able to get good detail on his face or anything like that. Um, so it does it does happen. But that's okay. Because you learn, and then you don't do it again. At least not until you're trying to push guns into a Arcanaut frigate. And the entire thing just blows up. But that didn't happen tonight, so we're good. All right. Clicking or clipping the parts off again. And again, like this clippers is just so nice. It creates such a really smooth line with that. I love it. I know it's strange to get excited about a tiny plastic sprue clipper thing, but man, if you were using it, you would you would feel this excitement too. Trust me. You would actually be thrilled. I'm st I'm still like my my blood pressure is like through the roof right now after that that gun experience. Which by saying that living in America that sounds like it could be really serious serious, but no, it's just with this plastic model I'm trying to put the guns together. All right, so I am going to glue this part now. So again, a little bit of glue on here, and we'll just put it together. And things have been holding fairly well, despite the paint, which does shock me. But I'm not complaining. We'll see how it is in the morning, but so far so good. That's right. Corax white base? Yeah, that's the stuff I did it with. Yep, I messed up. Bye, Regina. See ya. I know. Yeah, it is like putting in a graphics card. Only scarier because you didn't like spend hours painting and putting other little parts of your graphics card together, you know? Alright. Let's see. Hey, an actual ape. What's up, man? Thanks. Thanks for joining. Um... Probably gonna, unfortunately, we're probably gonna end the stream pretty soon here, but that's because we're getting towards the end of the first part of this model. The last part that we're gonna do tonight being sticking this thing to uh, this part, to the bottom. But there will be more streams in the future. I plan on, if possible, building and painting this entirely on stream from start to finish. That's gonna be the, the plan. It seems like I need to turn this even farther, because I keep like, because I'm turning towards the screen so I can kind of keep an eye on Twitch chat while I'm doing this. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So I'll put this part in. That made a very satisfying little click as I put it into place. That's cool. And man, I mean, it shows you how well the glue is holding, because I'm pressing down right on the seam of these two big parts that we put together earlier. Remember how freaky that was when we put these two big parts on? And now they're holding so well. That's great. That's definitely one of the more satisfying parts of the hobby, is when you put something together and then it, you see how like solid it becomes later on. Which I'm sure is a metaphor for all sorts of good and virtuous things in life, but it's almost midnight, so I'm too tired to think of that stuff right now. All right. And, uh, yeah, it's not supposed to move or anything, so check it out. Cool little pipes and stuff. And there we have it. That is the bottom section of the um, what is in the lower left right here. The Arcanaut Frigate. The Caradron Overlord's Arcanaut Frigate. There is the bottom part. So today, just to recap, what we did was we painted this inner console some of the gold highlights and the red um, like uh, I don't know cranks what do what you call them again I can't remember um, the valves yeah the red valves we painted those before we put everything else together and then everything else on this model you know we can paint that from the outside so we don't need to paint that early I generally like to leave all the painting until the end but we had to do this <clears throat> so uh, yeah so that's it 
So, yeah. Did I get the guns in place properly? I'd say so. They're here. They're, I think normally you're supposed to be able to push them all the way in and then like move them around a little bit. But um, I can't do that. It seems like uh, it's not going in all the way. Probably because I base I sprayed everything first so that it's a little bit thicker than it should be in this scene. But that's fine because I think it looks fine the way it is. They're both equal. They're not sticking out different amounts. So, yeah, I think that's fine. They're pointing slightly differently, but if this thing is like flying around and targeting different things, it would be anyway, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, valves, yes, thank you, little alien. That's the word I was looking for. But yeah, the uh, the front looks awesome. Um, the console looks awesome. I think this, uh, this thing turns, which is kind of neat. So yeah, not bad for a first episode of Chill Hammer with uh with doa here and with all of you guys thank you for joining um i'm going to work on this um hopefully completely on stream we will see um but yeah that's my plan anyway so again follow my twitter follow my instagram instagram is where i post a lot of update pictures things like that i'll be posting more of this later and Twitter is where I post about Overwatch League and all that other stuff I'm doing, and it's where my stream link is going to be a lot of times, too, when I'm, when I'm going to be streaming. So, uh, yeah, definitely follow both of those. If you could please follow my Twitch, too, so you get the notification. And uh, if you want to sub, thanks. Appreciate it. Um, but uh, and, and I don't know how consistent I'm going to be with streaming, so sub at your own risk right now. But uh, in the future, if, if there is enough interest and we keep doing this, then there will be, like, I'll think of some fun stuff to do, so... Yeah, that's that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, turned out pretty well. Looking forward to the next bits, um, which I'll give you. I'll give you a preview. The next bits we're going to be working on are going to be the uh, air balls. I don't know that go on the back, and we're also going to be uh, working on one of the little, little uh, these little dudes, the actual Caradron Overlord. So that'll be fun. Might go ahead and uh, definitely going to paint him before we attach him to the ship because he's going to be covered up by this big wheel otherwise. So more uh, painting next time probably too. So Yeah, so that'll be it. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to end the stream now. Uh, you guys have been awesome. It's been cool chilling out with you. Um, I'll see you on the Overwatch League or I'll see you on stream, one of the two. Um, but until then, uh, take care. Game on, have fun, be good to each other, and uh, see you later.